Hello everybody, welcome back to another structural analysis video. In this video we're talking about unstable structures and determinacy once again, but we're going to be looking at a different structure type, which is the truss. Now, before we start that, I want to talk about what we talked about in the last video. So just to recap, we needed to determine uh, structure stability and their determinacy prior to solving any uh, structural analysis equations. And this was needed so that we can figure out what procedures were going to be employed in order to analyze the specific structure. And if based on the indeterminacy, we can dictate what type of analysis method we're going to use. So for a determinate structure, we could use equilibrium equations. If, it, if the structure was unstable, that means that the structure wouldn't be safe to construct as it would translate or rotate upon construction, which meant it wasn't safe. An indeterminate structure, however, would require idealization of the model to relate deflection and slope to new equations in order to solve uh, outside of just the equilibrium equations we had prior. Now, to talk about the truss structure, they have altered the uh, compatibility equations that we've talked about previously, and we can cover how they actually got these equations. So for trusses, we recall that the members are straight axle force members that can currently act at points and pins to satisfy equilibrium. So for this reason, trusses are required to satisfy F at X and F at Y for the equilibrium requirements at each of these joints. Therefore, the joints have two equilibrium equations represented by this 2J. Thus, the equations look something like so. Stability, stability however, uh, is a little bit tricky for trusses, which is what we're going to be mainly focusing on in this video. But the general rules still do apply. If you have an unstable structure, then your structure is unstable. However, we know that uh, your structures can still be unstable if it's equal to or greater than uh, the left side or the right side of the equation. So there's two general rules. We have external instability and internal instability. And the external instability is based on the previous rule that we covered before. We have uh, concurrently acting reactions or parallel uh, acting reactions. So we could see right here in the uh, parallel case, if we applied a point P or a load P here, similar as before, there's no way for that X reaction to act uh, on these rollers. So the entire structure will translate. And then similarly, we have all of our reactions within this truss acting at a singular point meaning that if any uh, external force was applied, then you would have a form of rotation about that concurrent point. The tricky part about these structures uh, is that there could also be internal stability, which in most textbooks will tell you is determined through inspection. Uh, and there are some tricks that we can use in order to uh, identify it quickly. But generally, you have to look at the structure's shape changing. It doesn't necessarily mean that the entire structure is going to translate as it does in the external case. But even just small elements within the structure could be responsible for an internal instability, which is why I referred us to the first part of this example. As you can see, we have a complex truss structure here, and we have three members connecting to a smaller uh, triangular truss within the center of the structure. And if we can imagine, I'll use a different color here. Let's imagine we had our reactions acting at these points. With all those points, we can notice that there is a triangulation of all of these uh, forces and they're all going to point towards a point directly at the center. And we've talked about this previously, if we had some form of external force acting at these joints, then we're going to create a rotation about this singular point. However, only this internal uh, triangular system is going to be rotating, not the entire structure, because the triangulation of the external shape of this truss is going to remain rigid as the forces acting to resist rotation and translation for these exterior members are totally fine. It's only on the inside or the internal members 
where there's going to be a problem. Now, I hope that kind of explains what internal instability is, but pretty much the answer to this first problem is that this structure is going to be internally unstable. Now for the second problem, I picked a very similar structure type. However, now the connecting members to this internal shape are actually not going to create a concurrent point acting at the center. So that means we can actually proceed with some deterministic checks. And if we write down our equation, we have m plus r, and then we have to check whether it's less than, equal to, or greater than 2j. So we have m, which is represented by number of members. So if we count out our members, let's use a different color for this. I'll use red for members. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, then seven, eight, nine. So we have nine total members. Then let's use a different color to circle our joints. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we draw a line here and label this J, we're going to have six joints. And then the final thing we need is the reactions. And we know these ones pretty well. We have a pin here, we have a roller. So R is going to equal to three. Now using this equation, we're just going to plug and chug. We have nine here, plus three is going to be equal to two times J, which is six. We have 12 is equal to 12. Therefore, the structure is determinate. And if we do a external and internal check, we can see that the uh, the reactions are not acting at a concurrent point. They are not all parallel to each other. So externally, we are fine. And by visual inspection as well, we don't have a concurrent point where these members are acting. And all these shapes are triangulated. Therefore, we can say it is also internally and externally stable. And that's it for, uh, for trusses, a little bit trickier than what we did previously. Uh, but in the next video, we're going to be talking about the uh, determinacy of frames as well.